Good afternoon. I'm Megan Moore with Legislative Services, and today we're here to present oil and gas taxation and an in the interactive oil and gas tool and library. I'm staff for the Revenue Interim Committee and the House Taxation Committee. I'll pass it over to Joe to introduce himself, and then I'll go through the oil and gas taxation. Yeah, thanks, Megan. Uh, my name's Joe Bond. Uh, I'm <clears throat> on the revenue team at the Legislative Fiscal Division. Um, the Most of the oil and gas, uh, some natural resource, most of the natural resources, uh, as well as um, I do revenue estimating for bed tax, uh, marijuana, and vehicles. So I do not staff a committee, though. Okay, I'm gonna get some slides up on the screen and kick us off. Okay, so these slides will be available after the presentation online and anything that's underlined in orange is a hyperlink. So to start with thinking about oil and gas taxation, I wanted to provide a brief history of the tax. The current general tax structure that we use for oil and gas production in Montana has been in place since about 1995. And this production tax is based on the type of well and the type of production that takes place. Now, in Section of Law 1536.302, there's a legislative findings and a declaration of purpose section that was enacted when the production tax went into effect. And it tells us the reasons for moving to a production tax. And those reasons include that the previous taxes were, quote, exceedingly complex and confusing, that producers often had to pay taxes at different times on the same production, and that the goal was to simplify the taxation of oil and natural gas. And so when the production tax went into effect, it replaced the net proceeds tax, the privilege and license tax, and the severance tax. And the goal of the, the new tax and the distribution was to retain the distribution levels to states, counties, and schools. There are a few different terms to understand when we're talking about oil and natural gas taxation. The first is gross taxable value, which is contained in 1536.305, and this is the base for the tax, and, it, and it's the number of barrels or cubic feet of oil or natural gas produced and sold each month at the average value at the mouth of the well during the month, and this is determined by the Department of Revenue. Now, there are a couple of deductions from this amount. And those include the amount of oil or gas that's used to operate the well, as well as for pumping the oil or gas from the well to a tank or a pipeline. There's also a deduction for the administration of royalty payments, and that amount is a fee of up to 25 cents per barrel. And this is deducted whether or not the fee is paid on a per barrel basis. Now, the two other terms that are important are pre-1999 and post-1999 wells, and those are exactly what they sound like, but I just wanted to point out that the taxation varies based on whether the well was drilled before January 1st, 1999, or on or after January 1st, 1999. And then the final term that you'll hear is non-working interest. So a non-working interest owner is a person who does not share in the exploration, development, and operation costs of the oil lease or unit, and they only contribute uh, to paying production taxes. So with that in mind, we'll discuss natural gas taxation. This is contained in 1536.304, subsection 2. And if you were to go look at 1536.304, you would see a number of confusing looking tables. So my goal here today is to provide a high level overview of how the tax works. And then if you have specific questions, you can follow up with me later. So for the non-working interest for natural gas, the tax rate is 14.8%. For the working interest, there's what we call a tax holiday, 
it's not called that in statute, but it's commonly referred to that. And so for the first 12 months of production, the natural gas is taxed at 0.5%. And then after that 12 month holiday, pre-1999 wells pay 14.8% tax and post-1999 wells pay a 9% tax. But there's a similar taxation method for oil taxes, and this is based on primary recovery. And I will be the first to tell you that I'm not a petroleum engineer, but my understanding of primary recovery is that this is the initial production from the well, and it doesn't include using uh, tech technology or alternative methods to get the oil from the well. So like with the natural gas tax, the non-working interest portion is 14.8% tax. And the working interest, again, has that lower rate for the first 12 months of 0.5%. After 12 months, the pre-1999 well tax rate is 12.5%, and the post-1999 tax rate is 9%. Now, there are a number of additional incentive tax rates contained in 1536.304, and these are for things like wells that produce small quantities, which are referred to as stripper wells, for enhanced recovery or for additional production after the primary recovery. And I listed some examples for you here. They include horizontally completed wells, stripper wells, which are taxed differently, based on whether it's bonus production or exemption production, and those are defined within the statute. And then there's incremental production, which includes newer expanded secondary recovery production and newer expanded tertiary production. So for these incentive tax rates, the rate varies sometimes based on the quantity of oil produced or sometimes based on how long the well has been in production, often with a higher rate after 12 months or 18 months. So that's all I have on the oil and gas taxation, and I'm going to turn it over to Joe to go through the library and the interactive tool. I guess I could take questions if there are any at this point. And do questions later as well. I'm sorry, I'll try to get my video on here. Uh, can I ask you a question? Sure. So when we talk about like these tax rates in, in and I'm a freshman legislature, so I apologize, but in terms of like where these wells are located, are we talking about wells that are located all on private property? Are these also on public lands, you know, national or what's it differentiate in terms of that or is there? Uh, so as far as I know, there's no differentiation on the ownership uh, of the wells. It, this would be all production within the state of Montana. Okay, so that so yeah. the tax rate the tax rate's the same, whether they actually these companies actually own the land or whether they lease the land through the state. That's my understanding. Do you have a different understanding, Joe? Uh, as far as the tax rate goes, no, I do know, and I'll get into this a little bit. This kind of segues, um, but when we talk about the distribution. Um, there will be different ways uh, that the revenues and distributions are like, I guess, measured or collected, um, depending on if these are on federal land. But that's the only exception that I am aware of. Um, there are some wells and essentially we split the royalties with uh, the feds on on. Uh, minerals or, or natural resources that are that are pulled out of uh, federal land. Thanks. So I'm gonna get started here on uh, walking through the natural gas library. Um, so I'll just start off by showing everybody how to get there. Um, so starting on the legislative page, Go to fiscal, budget and revenue, revenue, and then oil and gas here. We've got um, volume two, which will be updated uh, shortly now that uh, the uh, revenue interim committee has adopted uh, HA2 revenue estimates. We'll be updating uh, our volume twos uh, throughout our page. Um, 
But the main thing that I wanted to talk about today is going to be this oil and gas data tool. And so this is a Power BI site that shows uh, revenues and distributions um, from oil and gas. Again, this is just oil and gas that is on uh, not federal land. So this is private, state, everything else. Um, anyways, the way that the, the, the distributions can get pretty complex as well as the tax rates. Um, so the general rule of thumb is that <clears throat> um, we, the state, are going to split uh, collections. Uh, there are exceptions to this, but uh, normally 50-50 uh, with locals. Um, one of the main exceptions to that is if the uh, school district funding is ex is in excess of 130% of their, um, of their, I believe it's GTB. I'm not, I'm blanking on it right now, but some of that can get kicked back to the state. <clears throat> and then of the state's share, um, about 10 or 10% is split off to either these, uh, state special revenue funds or guarantee fund. Um, and then the remaining 90% goes to the general fund. Those are general, not uh, exact numbers, but that's the best way to think about it. Um, so on this page, uh, you can see historical collections and distributions um, by different uh, by by different types. Um, if we go to the next page, this is going to be county collections and distributions. And you can pick your favorite county here. The next page has school district collections and distributions. And then the next page is going to show uh, kind of all of the data that uh, we, the LFD, use to uh, forecast um, oil collections. Uh, it has it's going to have um, price that we price per barrel that, that uh, Montana producers pay, as well as the number of uh, operating rigs, barrels of production. Um, and the last available data, there is a little bit of a lag to the data that we get, but the last available data is in August. So right down here in the bottom right corner, you can see about, we paid about $69 a barrel, um, producing 77,000 barrels a day uh, with one rig operating in the state, drilling new wells or redrilling old wells. Um, and then finally, on this very last page, this is uh, something that has come out of the MARA project and the, or the MARA committee. Um, this is our long term uh, oil and gas collections forecast. Um, this is not going to be um, identical to HJ2. Uh, this is more of a long term uh, forecast that will that that goes out to uh, 2040. Um, the idea here is to kind of get a, a sense for uh, what oil and gas could look like for the state in the future, in the long term future. Um, this is all of our forecasts are going to be based off of uh, IHS or SMP Global um, provides us for long term uh, price forecasts, and that's how we we create that collections and distributions forecast. Um, so this, I think, is one of the best tools that will help um, any new legislator or honestly anybody really to uh, understand where the money comes from and where it goes. Um, these distribution numbers have changed recently, as recently as the 2019 session, um, but, they, but that was the last time that they have changed. So that's what I've got on the oil and gas library on the uh, LFD page. Um, and I'd be happy to take any more questions as well.